Joker spoiler review. This is going to be a total spoiler review, okay? Wow, just saw Joker. I got to tell you, fucking Cesar Romero. He's good as the Joker. He's good. I don't think it's, you know, Oscar-worthy performance stuff. Uh, Burgess Meredith, interesting choice as the Penguin. The stuff about the bat repellent, oh, it, I didn't it, necessarily excuse me, understand completely. Yeah? I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, you watched the wrong one. What do you mean that's, the wrong one? What? That's that's the 66 Batman. What are you I, talking about? You're talking about the 66 Batman. I don't mean to interrupt you, but... This isn't the... Oh, shit. You, were, is, you wanted watched, to talk about Joker. God damn it. All right. Let, hey, let me pause this and we'll go see the right movie. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Now we're back. Okay. I saw the Joker now. Honestly, this is a fucking interesting movie. And I'm going to tell you why. When I first saw the trailers, it seemed to me like this was just going to be a very predictable movie. Like the kind of movie, honestly, we've seen a lot. We've seen so many art films where there's this descent into madness. And this guy, he just gets mistreated and it's a commentary on society. And and he just slowly descends into madness and that you feel bad for him. And that's honestly what I, I really was not looking forward to this movie for that reason is I thought, I don't want a Joker that I identify with and feel bad for. That's not a Joker character to me. I wanted a Joker who I just think is a maniac and who's just, just completely unhinged from the get-go, from a young age. All he really knows is madness. So that's why going into this movie, I kind of, I, I was pretty skeptical. I thought, I don't think this is going to work. I'm going to end up identifying with the fucking Joker. I'm going to end up feeling like I'm on his side and not really wanting to, um, to, to see him as the Joker. You know, he's not going to feel like a true villain to me. I got a guest speaker here tonight. She's going to jump in. She saw the movie too. What did you think? I thought it was phenomenal. And I think I did have some of those same concerns mm -hmm. going in. Um, like you totally. thought he was going to be I didn't like, want like it predictable? To be, no, I just didn't want it to be too sympathetic. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was concerned about that. But seeing the movie was, it, it just completely transformed me. What did the rape scene do to you? Did that bother you? Rape scene? You know, that was another movie I walked, I wandered into. I'm sorry. Okay. No, but... But so, okay, so we, we did not expect the movie to be quite this uh, unpredictable. I think the biggest things to me were, there were scenes in there like, um, the whole thing was Zazie Beetz's character. And the way that Joker imagined, you know, this relationship yes. with her, that yes. was so wickedly well done. Because they, they kind of did it perfectly where when he first just went up and kissed her at her apartment, and then all of a sudden they're not just dating but they seem to be completely on the same page about things. She made that comment uh, when he shot those three guys. She said, oh, good, three assholes down, a million more to go. Right. She, right, she lined up with yeah. him a little too much to me. I and, really liked how that just took us into the madness with him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was Stuff like that was cool. I did not foresee anything like that. And even though there were some really sympathetic moments, like he gets beaten up right at the very beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I, I, I'll tell you what else I really thought the trailer from the trailer that I was going to have to see. I thought this was going to be another story of a guy who gets beaten up, gets victimized, loses a close family member. Any movie like this seems to have that where I thought his mom was going to die of natural causes or something like that. And that we were going to really sympathize with him or that maybe he'd find a way to blame somebody. But this was very unique. When he, As soon as he suffocated his mom, I really realized, like, this was not the movie that I thought it was going to be. And exactly. this is a lot cooler, right? It, yeah. It just, it really threw a curveball in there that I didn't see coming at all. They didn't build up to that at all, right? No. I, it just no. came out of nowhere. So that was, a, that was a big change to me. And there were so many other scenes like that where, uh, like, when he killed... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't forget the character's name, but when he killed the guy from work in front of the, yeah. the little guy, the midget. Yes. That was wickedly cool. Uh, and the fact that he – see, now, now, now I can go the other way, yeah. though. I can go the other way just for a quick second. When then he spared the midget because then he, he mm -hmm. said to him a line, and this kind of pulled me back into what I was not liking about the trailer. When he tells the midget, he said, you were the only one who was nice to me. And it made me think, oh, see, there we go again now. I'm back to being kind of sympathetic for the Joker. 
which I don't want to be too much of. What did you think of that? Well, what I liked about that that whole scene, though, was that in my conventional thinking brain, I was thinking, oh, he's going to kill that midget because he doesn't want to witness. Yeah, then that's what I thought. Then he let the witness go, and then, you know, I, I had to switch my thinking again. So it was, it, it just continued the ride that it was taking us on. That part could have ended up with a rape scene, frankly. That's <laughs> probably where I got confused. I'm, Stop with the rape scene. Well, now. it just seems, this is a trolling channel. Listen, <laughs> um... Yeah, that that part I did think for sure. In fact, it's it's interesting to me. I kept waiting for that. And forgive me, I'm using the term midget, but I kept thinking he was going to tell the police or tell someone. And we never saw him again, right? He never, right. nothing ever happened out of that. Nope. That would have been interesting. In fact, there were a few loose threads that I would have liked more connected. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. I would have liked for him to go tell someone. And, and I know the movie was, they didn't want to make it too long. It was already about two hours, but... It would have been cool if there was a mad dash toward the end where he is telling people and he's trying to, to get to the Joker before he does anything on that TV show. Right. That would have been cool. But he kind of went straight from there, you know, to the studio and did the show. So. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It would have been cool if it was like more of a mad dash. Like if the, the midget goes and tells police and they mm -hmm. try to get there in time and they think he's going to do something, that would have been interesting. Um, I'll tell you what I really would have liked. I, I think as good as this movie was, it was great. I would have liked him to just to go way too far at the end at some point to, to go. And I'm sure a lot of people will say he already did. For right? <laughs> more than he went? <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was enough. I think because everyone's talking about how dark this movie was. And again, I really liked it. I really, really dug this movie. But we needed something so hideous above and beyond everything. Like in the movie, uh, the movie Monster, if anyone remembers Monster. She killed all these people, and it was increasingly worse and worse. Like, in the beginning, she killed mm -hmm. a guy who tried to rape her. And then I think she killed another person who was like a criminal, but maybe not as hardcore of a criminal. And, it, and, and gradually, she worked her way to kind of regular people who weren't doing anything really wrong to her. And then finally, at the end, if I remember right, the last killing she does in that movie is to a completely innocent guy. He's like an older guy. Uh, he was trying to help her, actually. And when she killed him, I felt like, ah, oh, yeah, that that did it now. She truly earns the name Monster now because she, the, you know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. ascension or descension of who she was and, and her crimes got worse and she worse. She too far gone. To what? Uh, yeah, it reached a point where, like, okay, there's no coming back from this. Joker kind of did this, but not so much. I'll tell you again, I as much as I, I went up and down with this because what he says to Murray at the end right before he shoots him, I thought was was really dead on when he says you you had me on your show to make fun of me and uh and, and he's telling murray what a bad guy murray is and murray says something to him like oh yeah how am i a bad guy well, how am i a bad guy no you were murray you were it's debatable if, if a gun to your head and a bullet through your fucking head was necessary but yeah murray was a bad dude don't you, do you think murray was a bad guy uh i don't think he was bad to that extent but um in he's a prick yeah Exactly. Thank you. So you wouldn't have put a bullet through his head? No, but I understand why Joker did. <laughs> like a, a knife to the genitals, though? Would you have been okay with that? That would have been better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I think, again, Joker made a lot of good points. I don't mean the movie. I mean, he, the Joker, made a lot of good points mm -hmm. with everything he was doing. He told the midget how he, you know, you were the only one who was nice to me. Then he shoots Murray and he gives a valid reason. I mean, valid, but he gives, <laughs> <laughs> he gives a reason as to why Murray was a prick. Murray was an absolute prick. And then uh, I forget. Oh, and the, the, don't forget the first killings he did. Those guys completely deserved it. Yeah. I mean, those those guys were those guys were trying. Weren't they trying to like rape a chick? And that actually was a rape scene, almost. Almost. Okay, there you go. I didn't completely fabricate. <laughs> so there were there were things. It's like almost everything the Joker. Almost not everything, but almost everything he did. You could at least make an argument for. They're like, all right, well, mm -hmm. you know, this is, I mean, th he wasn't he wasn't just out for blood, is what I'm saying. I would have liked if at one point he was like uh, when he probably killed Zazie Beats' character. That was good. That I think that was when you know she did nothing wrong at all. And so, but but then we didn't really get to see how that played out. And also, she had a kid, right? She had a young kid. That would have been great if Joker went so far as to have like. Maybe for a second we think he's going to spare the kid, right? Yeah. Something like that, and then he yeah. doesn't. That would have made me think, Jesus, now I really can't. And they didn't show us that. They, they kind of no. implied that maybe it'd go that way, maybe it wouldn't. 
I like that they left that up to our imagination, but I don't. I, no, I think I, that was a terrible I, idea. <laughs> I, I think that's exactly what we needed right there. I was starting to really think, oh boy, now we're going to see all on just Joker who doesn't give a damn. We never really saw that, in my opinion. We saw him do horrible things, right? But we didn't get to see him pull that monster moment where, holy shit, this guy, like, you, you know, I never really wanted him dead. You know what I'm saying? I never sat there and thought, where's Batman to kick this guy's fucking ass? I never got to that point, really. Maybe that says like, more about me than... than no, I feel like we saw that with his last two killings. Who were his last two? Murray and who else? Murray and the and the co-worker guy who gave him the gun. Those are the last two? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could pontificate over this for hours, but... Really thoughtful movie, and I, I do think it was different <coughs> than I expected. Mm -hmm. I really, God, I was, the thought of going into that movie theater, I, I kept thinking, what if we get like 20 minutes of watching his mom suffering and sick and he's crying? And I thought, I don't want to see this fucking movie. I really wasn't looking forward to it. And that's what, exactly what I thought we were going to get. And I thought we were going to get a lot of him kind of like pleading with people to be better people. And I just and and uh, I didn't want to see any of that. But thank God, none of that happened. And we did see him make a good turn. For me, it could have been more of a turn. For me, it could have been he could have been maybe twenty percent less sympathetic, twenty or thirty, maybe fifty percent more monster, eighty percent more monster would have been good for me. But you know, again, I'm not complaining. Good movie, fucking good movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, we just ruined the whole thing for you. We talked about everything. Um, so <laughs> I would say go fucking see it, but don't don't bother because we just don't do the whole thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's probably everything, right? I don't think there's much more to talk about on this thing. Well, th those were the high points. Any any finishing well, thoughts this, about this? This was one of those rare movies that stayed with me for days after I saw it. So I think that's the mark of a good movie. Yeah, me too. It, I did wake up the next day and even the next day with it really on my mind with all these little, little moments about it and little sick kind of things that happened and, uh, you know, I'll tell you one thing before we close out of this. I know this is going on for a while here. I love the take on Thomas Wayne as mm. much as I, you know, wasn't that yeah, cool? Yeah, we didn't talk about that. No, we didn't. Let's explore it for a second. I, in Batman Begins, I loved that Thomas Wayne is such a good dude and that Bruce is really kind of trying to live up to how great a dude Thomas Wayne was for all the things. He was such a philanthropist. Remember yeah, that? Yeah. And and usually that's that's kind of how he's represented in most takes. Maybe not quite to that degree. This was cool to see that his dad was a lot more of like a, eh, more of what you'd expect out of a very rich man with old money. You know, you'd see, so usually yeah, there was that great scene where he punches Arthur, you know, in the bathroom. That was really cool. I thought that um, it just felt more grounded, more realistic to me that he wasn't this amazing humanitarian. He was really flawed. Maybe that's kind of the thing about this movie that, that made it stay with me so much. Pretty much everybody was very flawed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. you really didn't have, no one that you got to know well seemed like an angel. You know what I mean? Yes. Only the people, and maybe Zazie Beetz's character, we didn't really get to know her very well. But it, it really was filled with flawed people in a flawed town in a flawed time. Yeah. And that really appealed to me. It felt very real, very gritty in that way. Um and, you know, I, I tell you, the, one of the coolest scenes, I'll, I'll digress a little bit from Thomas Wayne for a second. Right at the beginning, right at the beginning, I thought was a brilliant choice where after he gets beaten up, there's a, a really subtle thing that happens. I don't, I don't know if they really intended to, um, to, to really be a conversation piece, but something so subtle happens when the boss is firing him and, and Arthur says to him, well, you know, it's not my fault. These guys jumped me. They took the sign. And the boss tells him two things in the same breath that completely go against each other. Remember this? Yeah. He says, oh, come on. What, why would they take a sign? That doesn't make any sense. His exact words were that doesn't make any sense. And he says, well, what would these kids want with a sign? What, were they, what are they going to do with a sign like that? And Arthur says, well, I don't know. And then the guy tells them, come on, you got you to gotta give us back the sign or we got to find you for the sign. And then Arthur says to him, well, what, what would I do with this? Like, why would I want it? You know, is, am yes. I misquoting him? Wasn't that pretty much what he said? Pretty much, yeah. Right. So Arthur makes the point of like, well, what do right. I want with the sign? And then the, the dude, the boss, did such a shitty thing, which happens, I think, constantly in society where he said something like, oh, come on. You know, you, we know you have it. So I thought, wow, what an ass. And this is so not 
a reach. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. People do this all the time. The dude, like, I mean, lawyers do it. Judges do it, especially anything. Like, cops fucking do it. Anything in the, uh, <laughs> in the, the legal, you know, the, that whole world, right, of law enforcement, they do it all the time. They do that exact move that Arthur's boss did where – on one hand, they're saying, oh, come on, I don't believe that some guys would steal this sign. What do they want with it? It has no street value. What the fuck? And in the same breath, they're accusing him of keeping the sign. Oh, it, the movie was three minutes in probably when that happened. I wanted to reach right through the goddamn screen and choke yeah. that guy. I couldn't fucking believe. I think he said something like, what do I what do I know why you would want it or something, something yeah. like that? Yeah, right? that sounds right. Right. Like, what do I know what you want? Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, what, what, then why can't you believe that these four thugs... You can't believe these four fucking punks would beat a guy up and just take it for the thrill, but you believe this guy would give up his job for that stupid fucking sign. That, I thought, was a stroke of genius because right off the bat I went, ooh, I am going to like this movie. That's <laughs> that's cool because that was so relatable. I mean, I don't maybe it's just me, but mm-hmm. I've had some people accuse me of some stupid fucking shit before. You can probably tell. And uh, <laughs> that, that rang so true to me. I thought, oh, my God. Arthur would, you know, frankly... Again, I was sympathetic to him. I felt so bad for him because he really didn't do anything wrong. He got beaten up and then fired over it. Yeah. And accused of some shit he didn't do. Oh, my God. So right off the bat, I was feeling bad for him. And again, you know, I went up and down with that through the movie where I kept thinking, I don't I don't like that I feel bad for this dude. But, you know, so much. But then again, I never felt so bad for him. It wasn't what I expected. Like I said, he wasn't sobbing by his mom's bed for an hour. You know, it wasn't that where... I had a bad feeling the whole first two acts, frankly, mm-hmm. were going to be seriously like 80, 90 minutes of you feel real bad for him. Right. Then he snaps, has too bad of a day, goes on a killing spree where, where I would still feel like, yeah, but the world made him this way, you know? And, and I guess, you know, that's kind of, it's sort of the commentary of this movie. I thought, what do you think? Was that, was that what they were trying to say? Was that we made him or were they just saying, look, he's a uh, fucked up guy, but maybe we have a hand in this to some degree. Yes. You think yeah. so? I, I think that they showed that he was someone who was always teetering on that edge. Yeah. And it didn't take much to to push him over. Yeah, no shit. He made a little too much sense sometimes, though, too. Like, I remember he said some, I misquote him, but he said something to the, uh, uh, the, the therapist or the social worker or something like that at one point mm-hmm. where he's like, but you don't even, I come in here and you don't even listen to me. Yeah. Remember that? And then yeah. I... I, I think and it, it, he called her a cunt, right? If I remember correctly, did he call, did he call? <laughs> I don't think he called her. A cunt. He did, okay. He sh- well, I, again, I, I'm mixing stuff up a little bit. He should have. Um, I called her a cunt. Is what happened from the <gasps> seat. What is what was. I did. Yeah. I mean that. It was a good commentary there too. On look, let's face it. That whole system. As long as I'm insulting, <laughs> I'm, I'm, as long as I'm putting down all of law enforcement, judges, cops, the whole fucking thing. Let's go ahead and talk about how a lot of mental health is really a bunch of horse shit. It's, it's really just a, really so much. The way she didn't listen to him and the way she didn't even really talk to him like he was a person. You know, no wonder the guy fucking just, just went further and further deeper into this descent. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I, I think we've covered pretty much everything at this <laughs> point, right? <Quite> a bit, <laughs> yeah. Damn good movie. We're almost 20 minutes in. This is getting way too long. But yeah, this, this movie totally uh, totally was a much better film than I thought it was going to be from the trailers. That, that line in the trailers that always bugged me, we'll go out on this note, was when he says, uh, he's like, I always thought of my life as a, as a drama or something, mm-hmm. or as a tragedy is what he said. And he's, but now I realize it's a comedy. And I thought, God, you know, that line's been done a few times before. That's not a new line. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that's just been around, whether it's in music or books or whatever the fuck. It's been around. That, that line's been around. It's not unique. And I just thought, God, they're kind of hanging their fucking hat on that line, mm-hmm. being the big finale to the trailer, like, ooh, go see this movie. And mm-hmm. I uh, I really thought this is not a movie for me, but damn, no, it, it worked. It was gritty as hell. Mm-hmm. We got a, we, and we even got a couple of little scenes with young Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Just, you know, that was, yeah. and, and how about, oh, oh, I'll finish up on this one, then we're going to be done. <laughs> when, when Thomas Wayne, this was the best, after he punches him, and he tells the soon-to-be Joker when he says, uh, he says, don't ever touch my kid again or, or get away from her. Don't ever get near my kid again. At first, I didn't think much of it. I, I kind of forgot that his kid's going to be Batman. I thought, yeah, that's right. Stay away from his kid. And then it, it just <laughs> so hauntingly 
rang true when he says, don't touch my kid again. I thought, oh, shit, Thomas, if only you know, dude. Yeah. If only you know what the next so many years are going to hold. That was just, that was such a fucking poetically cool line to bring it all in. And and, and speaking of poetry and, and the Waynes and that whole thing, the way that ultimately, what were we saying? How How Joker was born? And really at that exact same moment right. that Joker was being born, Batman was being born. Yeah. That was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. It was a great use of, of the Waynes, too, without overusing them in the film. The fact that Joker and Batman were born at just about the same second yeah. was such an eerie poetry that no one would ever know. Not, neither one of them would ever I, know that in the future, either. Yeah, that juxtaposition almost it escaped me in that moment. until It, Did it? Didn't, it didn't fully hit me until later. That's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, that was just such a such a crazy, beautiful ending. Really, really good. So anyway, guys, that's it, man. Sorry, uh, it's probably another 10 years or so before I do another video. But at some point, this channel is really going to go. Like, I'm really going to do this every day. And we're going to have fun with this. But uh, if you like this video, definite thumbs down. Don't like or subscribe or anything like that. I don't deserve <laughs> that kind of love, right? I mean, I'm, I'm barely even on here. So just, you know, make sure you, you comment horrible, horrible things about me. All right. Peace and love.